Hey everybody, it's Kim Danke, Bishop Olith new member, Fast Track instructor, and tonight is our food combining webinar. We are going to take component number three of the Shibboleth Shield and break it down. Last night, we did the lifestyle overview, which told you that each day there's five things that we need to do. Drink our water, journal our foods, eat in the right food combinations in order to control insulin, have the right portions and stop grazing. We're going to have up to three meals a day. And then if you needed a freebie, an extra or a snack, then you can utilize an appropriate one of those. So I hope that you had a great day. Did anybody have a perfect day? If you were on Facebook and you are a member, please hit the share button for us and help us let other people see what we have to offer in the Shibboleth lifestyle. Also, thank you, Patty. Thank you for sharing. Um, and those of you who are watching, let us know how much weight you've lost. And then if you are in the Zoom room, let me know if you had a perfect day. Thank you for setting your chat to everyone. And he had a perfect day. Is this Ron? It, was it Ron? Because the name shows up as Dawes Dunham. Rob, Rob. Okay, Rob. Awesome. Thank you, Rob. Rob had a perfect day. Connie says, I think so. I love it. I love it. Robert. Okay, gotcha. I gotcha. Awesome. Hey, Jack, perfect day. Awesome. I had a perfect day today myself. Excited about that. I had a perfect day yesterday, perfect day Saturday, perfect day Friday, and then I had a holiday last Thursday. I'm planning on a possible hol I'm planning on a holiday tomorrow. Jennifer had a perfect day. Awesome. Awesome. You know, just having a perfect day under your belt makes you feel better. You get two perfect days under your belt. It's amazing how quickly you're going to feel so good. Oh my goodness, Sabrina is has been perfect today and lost 17 pounds. Way to go, Sabrina. That is wonderful. Congratulations. Hey Nancy, glad you're here. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and get started tonight. I'm going to share my screen with you, and we are headed over to Fast Track. If I can manage to get there. There we go. There we go. So I clicked on Fast Track. I saved Fast Track as a favorite on my favorites bar. Y'all, I got lots of tips about, I, I like to save everything as a favorite. On my computer, I save things that I go to regularly as a favorite on my home screen and my phone. I want it to be easy because if there's one, two, three, four, five clicks to have to get somewhere, sometimes you don't go there because you don't want to make all those clicks. And so what I do is I save it to my home screen or as a favorite right where I want to be every single time. So I'm all about making life easy, quick and easy hacks to accessing things that you want to access quickly. So I'm going, I hope that y'all have been working on lap one and lap two. These are, some of these are quick. Some of these are just reading a page. Some of these are looking through and finding some meals. I hope that you've been working through that diligently, okay? And then in lap two, I hope that you are working through filling out your profile. It's very, very important. If you miss any of the webinars that we do, each night, Sunday through Saturday, I house them right here, right here where it says watch the daily fast track webinars. If you miss one of them, this is where you'll be able to come and find it. It's in lap two. And then what I'm doing tonight is I'm going to use this link right here. I'm going to teach by this link. But the reason I have it here is so many people ask for it after the fact so they can go back and look, look at it. I just go ahead and link it here for your access. And then before we move to tomorrow night's food library, I do want you to pack, take this quiz and pass this quiz, okay? And these, this quiz is really based on the little 14 videos right here. Takes you about an hour to watch those. All right, so I'm going to go to lap two. I'm going to click on the simple food combining website link. And the way that I'm going to do this tonight is I'm going to recap oils one time, I'm going to go over condiments one time. And then each time I come to a new category, I am going to read out the names of the items that are in here. I want you to keep in mind that these are very short lists, very short lists. But if you, if you say, I didn't like anything that she just read out, 
there's more to pick from. Okay, now I'm hoping that most people do like some of the things on here, but sometimes there are picky eaters and I, I'm one myself, so I feel you. If you don't like what I've said, scratch it off your list. You don't have to eat anything on Planet Shibboleth that you don't want to eat. There's plenty in each of the categories for us to figure it out. All right, so then I'm only gonna read every new column that I come to. I'm not gonna reread the examples that I've already read. Um, and then there's some random foods in the end that we're gonna go over as well. Some popular ones that people just like to know about, okay? So let's go ahead and look at the cooking oil and fats. Now, last night I talked about the fact that we're making some simple swaps on Shibboleth. Um, and if anybody is listening tonight and you are not a member, please know that you're our special guest and we do hope that you like what you see and hear tonight and that you would find value in this. Currently, a lifetime membership is $65. On Thursday morning, that price is going up to $99 annually. OK, and it's still going to be worth it at that point. It is still going to be worth ninety nine dollars annually at that point. But right now it is sixty five dollars for a lifetime membership and you never have to pay again. OK, so keep that in mind. Um, you just go to my Shibboleth .com, my to get your membership. All right. So cooking oils and fats. We're simply going to swap the oils and fats that we used before for one of these four things. Um, you can use 100% MCT oil. MCT stands for medium chain triglyceride. It has almost no propensity to be stored on your body as fat. What were you using before you found out about Shibboleth and this simple swap? Probably some canola oil, vegetable oil, olive oil, something like that. Those are long chain triglycerides and they have a great propensity to be stored on your body as fat. I think I'll take the one that has almost no propensity. So that's why I only buy MCT oil now. MCT oil is a fat lipid, but it's a short fat lipid, a long chain, a, a long chain triglyceride is a longer fat lipid. You light this on fire and you light this on fire, which one's gonna burn up faster? This little short one's gonna burn up faster. And the long chain triglycerides are also very dense. So they take a long time to break down. If you were always giving your body unapproved oils, they take longer to burn and longer to break into because of the density of them. So you just wanna keep that in mind and know that's one of the reasons we make this swap. It's amazing information. You could also use coconut oil. It is 66% MCT oil, but not 100. You can use ghee butter, spelled G-H-E-E, -E, butter, and it is 25%. MCTs. Really, it's butter that has had the milk solids pulled out of it, and it's just the fat that's left, okay? So that's about 25% MCTs. And then we have zero calorie cooking spray, which really just isn't a fat at all. It's just a, a, a product that we can use to help things move around in our pan without sticking. You can use zero calorie cooking spray. When I am cooking a lean protein, whether it is from category one or category seven, the shellfish lean protein, either one of those categories, I'm gonna use 100% MCT oil. I'm gonna use ghee butter for cooking purposes mostly. I don't spread this on toast, but I use it for cooking purposes. And then if I am cooking a protein plus fat, that's when I use zero calorie cooking spray. Make sure that you cook on low to medium heat if you're using MCT oil, otherwise it will set off your smoke detector. It has a low smoke point, so cook on low to medium heat. You are forewarned, otherwise you will be like flagging your, the smoke in your kitchen. Okay, so now we're going to have a look at condiments. See, condiments are pretty important because condiments are those things that make our food taste like we want them to. Because you could take a piece of chicken breast, and if you do nothing to it, it's going to taste like chicken breast, chicken breast, chicken breast, chicken breast. If you like that, great. But if you like a little flavor, you could add barbecue sauce to chicken breast and have barbecue chicken. You could add some little Mexican seasoning and you could have some Mexican chicken. You could add um, Italian seasoning to it and have Italian chicken. So based on your condiments, help your food taste like 
what you want it to taste like. So it's really important to understand how to use condiments. We didn't even talk about condiments last night. I don't, I don't even have time to get into that on Sunday nights. But we have a rule about condiments because there are so many things that can be used as condiments that we're not all, we're not going to have every single one of them in the food library. That would be just a massive amount of lots of little things in the food library. So what we do is we give you a rule. We call it the five, two, and a few rule. This is a sprinkling, okay? Five, two, and few. Um, you can use any zero calorie condiment. 15 calorie or less spices and seasonings, salt and pepper, salsa, reduced sugar ketchup, mustard, hot sauce, craft, fat-free mayo, and that's just a that's just a small list. But if you want to add other things to the list, yes, we do have them listed in condiments in the food library. But let's say that you're just walking down the aisle at the grocery store and you want to get a salad dressing and you walk over to the salad dressings. You pick a salad dressing by looking at the nutrition label and you're looking for two pieces of information. You're looking for the sugar content in that salad dressing or whatever it is you're wanting to use as a condiment and you're looking for the fat content. So two pieces of information, sugar content and fat content. The five comes in on the sugar. You want it to have five grams of sugar or less per serving. And then the two is you want it to have two grams of fat or less per serving. And if you if it's got five grams of sugar or less and two grams of fat or less per serving, and you're not going to use more than 50 calories on a meal, then that you can use that. Can you have multiple condiments on a meal? Yes. So let's say that you make yourself a 96% lean ground beef hamburger patty, and then you want to use a slice of fat-free cheese. That's about 30 calories. Well, that would be you'd have 20 more calories to use. Let's say that you want mustard. Well, mustard is typically uh, zero calories, so you can use that. I've seen some that are five, and you just want to be aware of that, but most are zero. And then you would still have 20 calories worth of ketchup to get in there. Okay, let's say that you don't really want ketchup, but you want a thin slice of tomato or a thin slice of onion, you know, no thicker than your pinky, thin. Um, then you could use that too. So you could actually get multiple condiments on a meal. Um, you just want to keep in mind, they all need to meet the five and two part, and you don't want your total count of condiments to go over 50 calories on a meal. You can do 50 calories per combined meal. So if you ate 50 calories, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you could do that. I do say on a combined meal because we do not need to add calories to meal replacements, okay? If you were to take 50 calories at each meal times three meals a day, that's 150 calories. You multiply that over the course of a week, it's 1,050 calories that you've ingested in just condiments. So what I find is I just get a little pickier with my condiments now, and I, will, I like to use the zero calorie condiments or the 15 calorie or less spices and seasonings and salt and pepper and all of that. So I just gotten a little bit pickier so that I can eliminate some of those calories over that. Um, but you can use condiments. Now, I have stood in the grocery store before and typed in the name of condiments into the food library to see if they were in there. But now I do what I just call practically applying the five and two rule to jars that are in the grocery store. So if you go up and let's say that you're looking for a barbecue sauce and you go, oh, which one of these barbecue sauces would work? First of all, most of the time, the ones that say sugar free are going to work. But if you just flip them around and you scan for the sugar content, if it has more than five grams of sugar in it, turn that one around. He's out of the running. And then you look for the fat content. If it has more than two grams of fat, turn that one around and then you, that one would be out of the running. And then you'll have a couple left up there that you can choose from. So that's how you practically apply that rule while you're standing in the grocery store aisle, rather than having to type it all into your food library, because that would take some time. Just being able to know the rule and scan will be easier. Hey, Angelia, glad you're here. 
Okay, so now we're going to head on over here to category one. Category one, lean protein. It says you could do two to eight ounces per meal. Um, ladies, we should go, you know, up to about six ounces. You can use up to six ounces. Hey, Victoria, glad you're here too. Um, men could go up to eight ounces, okay? Um, now, I've never measured. I just put it underneath my hand, and if it fits, I eat it. This is my lean protein hand, and that's that's what I do. I just eat it. But if you're trying to really stay in there, that's good to know the ounces. Also, I want to make sure that I have a good, good hey, Vicki, I want to make sure that I have a good amount of protein to help sustain me between meals. So I like to get my full amount of protein. Okay, egg whites are here. All fish, all fish is here. Chicken breast, turkey breast, pork tenderloin, boar's head turkey, boar's head chicken breast, boar's head London broil, low fat cottage cheese, fat free cottage cheese, Greek plain yogurt, Hebrew National, 97% lean beef franks, and 96% lean ground meat. Uh, I'm going to talk about some of these things. This 96% lean ground meat, that could be beef, chicken, turkey. It's that processed meat that we often brown for spaghetti and other things like that. Um, and then we have low fat and fat free cottage cheese here, but full fat cottage cheese is a protein plus fat. It's just not a lean protein. And the reason that these say boar's head is because we just know they are a very lean meat, but there's a lot of other deli meat that is approved. Okay. Um, and this pork tenderloin, this is one of the only pork products that is here. There are some Canadian bacons that would fit in this category, but when you are using pork tenderloin, if you have some if you have some, um, if you see any visible fat on that, go ahead and trim that off because you're using these category ones to keep you safe when you want to eat one of your favorite energy carbs or fruit with it, okay? All right, so now last night, remember I said there's seven categories of food. Five of them don't even have to be combined at all. So what each one of the rows that I'm going to be going over tonight gives you a meal you could eat. And they're going to be some simpler meals to some, uh, to some more uh, variety on your plate. And what we go over tonight is not every single combination, okay? But that's why you gotta create those favorites lists of your, your favorites foods. Okay, this is showing you right here that you can have a lean protein by itself. Um, boar's head ham, you would just wanna look and see. Um, it would probably work, but you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just going to go into the food library real quick and look, but boar's head ham, you would definitely, if you would look at the, the, the back of the label, if it has 20% or less fat from, um, I mean, calories from fat, then the ham would work. Let's see. Yeah, there's boar's head lean deli ham. Let's click it. It's a category one lean protein, yes. And there's also gonna be some others there too. You just want it to have 20% or less calories from fat for it to be an approved category one meat. Okay, so this is saying that you can eat category one by itself cook it up in the proper oil, doctor it up with some uh, condiments, and you would have an excellent fat burning meal. Now you wouldn't be having much, but like I said, this is one of those things where situational eating, sometimes you need to know what it is that you can do to keep yourself safe and having a perfect day. But we're gonna scroll down right here. We have a brand new category, category two fibrous carbs, half a cup up to one cup. It is best in weight loss mode to stick with half a cup but this would be your fibrous carb hand. If you don't feel like measuring, just put it underneath there and stick it. If, it, if you can't see it, you're good. That would be about half a cup, okay? Broccoli, asparagus, squash, okra, green leafy vegetables, spinach, cabbage, cucumbers, bell peppers, hot peppers, cauliflower, kraut, dill pickles, green beans. 
All of these things right here are also freebies. Now, remember though, we do not add freebies to meals. You only use those in a moment of mental weakness where you're like, I'm gonna give in if I don't have something. You could go to one of these as a freebie. But when you're eating it with a meal, you call it a category two fibrous carb, okay? It really depends on how you're using the food as to what you call it. Was that a freebie because um, you needed it or was it a category two because you were eating it with a properly combined meal? So I wanna see some ideas. What would y'all put together right here? Which, what from category one and what from category two would you put together and have as a meal? And while y'all are typing that in, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of, you pick one thing from category one you pick something from category two. By the way, if you wanted two category twos, you could do two category twos. They would still just need to fit underneath this hand, but you could do two category twos. Technically, you could do two uh, category ones. They would just need to fit underneath your hand, okay? So you could have more flavor on your plate. You just need to fit them underneath your hand, okay? Um, and then you cook this up in the right oil and doctor it up with the right condiments. Okay, Rob says he made chicken stir fry tonight with chicken breast, asparagus, cauliflower, delicious. And he used Pam, he used Pam. You could use with that if you wanted to, the MCT oil. Okay, Vicky, chicken breast with green beans and cucumbers. Yum, that sounds good. And Jack, this evening I had grilled chicken and green beans. I love it. It's just super simple, easy to do. And it's just a classic plate that, that is very helpful. If you wanted to make this category one and this category two be the fastest fat burning combination, which oil would you use? And those of you who had some chicken and green beans and chicken breast with green beans and cucumbers, did you use any seasonings? Let me know if you used any seasonings. I, we, we at my house, we just like nature's seasoning. Sprinkle that on the chicken and grill it. Which oil though? Yes, Molly, that's right. MCT oil would make it be the fastest fat burning combination. Connie says hot dogs with, with sauerkraut. Okay, yeah, you could have um, this Hebrew National 97% lean beef frank. You could have one of that with sauerkraut. Um, and then there are some, there's a, Ballpark, white turkey, Frank, that's also a category one. So you could do that one. Um, Rob says use lemon pepper seasoning, yummy. Jennifer, I use McCormick's tasty, zingy seasoning on the chicken. Awesome, yum. So this is, we're eating good. Eating good in the neighborhood. I don't know what commercial that is, but I know it's something. Okay, category seven, shellfish. Shellfish is really just a what? Y'all tell me, what is shellfish? It's really just a... That's right, Jennifer. It's really just a category one lean protein. It's category seven because it was pulled off. Now, if y'all heard tonight, I said that fish, all fish is in the category one lean protein, but all the other critters that live in water, whether or not they have a shell, just go in the shellfish category, okay? And some people don't want to eat shellfish due to biblical and medical reasons, and so it's just in its own category, but it is just a lean protein. You can have two to eight ounces, just like the other lean protein, crab, lobster, shrimp, scallops, oysters, mussels, clams. You can eat shellfish by itself. You would still just have it, you know, pretty much underneath this hand here. You can use the right oil. A lot of times I see ghee butter being used here. You know, dip some crab legs in ghee butter or lobster tail in ghee butter or make yourself a shrimp scampi or cook up some scallops in there. So you, I see a lot of ghee butter used here. And then you can use the appropriate condiment. And you would have some excellent food. A lot of times I go to some after hours events and they'll just have boiled shrimp. You could just eat boiled shrimp if you wanted to. Um, okay, but now we've come to another combination. We got shellfish with a category two. If you eat shellfish, what do you see right here that you would put together for a meal? And Again, just like on that other one, if you use MCT oil with this, it would be the fastest fat burning combination as well. And if we've got some shellfish lovers, y'all write in here what you would eat. And if you know of something else that you would eat that's not even on this list, you can say it too, if you want to. If you eat crawdads, you can put them on here. <laughs> Victoria says nothing. Victoria, I'm not much of a shellfish eater myself, so I feel you. 
but there are so many other options that it doesn't bother me. Anybody else? Okay, so Jennifer, shrimp with leafy greens, awesome. Once you watch the video on hemp flakes, y'all might even want to get some hemp flakes and sprinkle that on some shrimp scampi. That would probably be really good. Okay, well, we're going to move on from that one right there. But if y'all think of something, you can write it in there. But if you're not a shellfish eater, don't worry about it. You just don't even look at category seven combinations. You won't even have to concern yourself with those. Like, I don't look at them really. Okay, category four, protein plus fat. Now, you can eat category four by itself. But optimally, you'd eat it with a category two um, and it's look right here, two to six ounces. This is a protein plus fat. You're lowering your ounces just a little bit. Now, I've never actually measured y'all. Y'all gonna figure this out about me. I'm just like, I don't wanna measure. I don't wanna, I don't wanna count calories. This is why Shibola works so well. Cause here's my measuring tools. Put it underneath this hand, put it underneath this hand. Can I see it? Nope, I'm good to go. But I do want you to know the reason that we backed off a little bit on these ounces here. In one gram of protein, there's four calories. And in one gram of fat, there's nine calories. So there's more than double the amount of calories in a, in a gram of fat as compared to a gram of protein. And so they're just back off a little bit on the ounces there. So ladies, if you're really measuring about up to four ounces would work for you, six for the men. But I just, I just put it underneath my hand and if I can't see it, I eat it. Okay, this is where your whole eggs are, all cuts of steak, pork ribs, beef ribs, pulled pork. So most of your pork products are gonna be here except for some Canadian bacons and that pork tenderloin. Beef brisket, 93% lean up to 95.9% .9 lean ground meat and turkey kielbasa as long as no more than 50% of the calories come from fat. So earlier when Jack asked the question about um, the boar's head ham, and I gave him that little rule. The rule is simply this, for a meat, a meat product, you know, let's say he's, he was asking about that, but let's say you want to buy some bologna. If you pick up that bologna and you look at the back of that bologna, which most bologna wouldn't be a lean protein, but anyway, if it had 20% or less calories from fat, you could call that a category one. But if it has 50 to 21% fat, you would call that a protein plus fat. But if it is more than 50% fat, we're that's not approved for a perfect day. You could still call that holiday food if you wanted to, but that's not approved for a let me do right day. Okay, so that's why it's specific on that turkey kielbasa, giving you a little hint there about what you're looking for. And then this right here, 93% lean up to 95.9% .9 lean ground meat. That's that processed meat, you know, that you would brown up for certain things or make hamburgers out of. If you purchase one that is less than 93% lean, that's not approved for a perfect day, okay? Because um, it's really a bunch of fat with a little bit of meat added to it if it's less than 93% lean on the processed meat, okay? Let's see. Um, Victoria, whole eggs. Women should stick with about two. A man could go up to three. All right. Category four protein plus fat can be eaten by itself, but optimally you'd eat it with a category two. What are y'all seeing that you would eat together from these two things? We're just going to combine some things. And then while you're typing that in, I'm going to ask another question. Obviously you can use your condiments here, but there is, there's a column right here that's missing it was right before yeah jack you well in a meal in a meal matt if, jack if you wanted to make a meal i mean if you could stick with two jack it's probably better but you could go up to three in a meal not per day if you had another meal of eggs you could have three more molly eggs and spinach for breakfast molly that was one of the first things i made i did a uh i did an egg white spinach omelet but I really prefer the whole eggs and spinach. But yes, that's good. That's good. And you can even put some condiments on there, maybe a little bit of cheese in there if you want to. Um, Connie says steak and a salad. Awesome. And she could use some approved condiments for a dressing, uh, like hopefully a zero calorie salad dressing would work with that. And right here, what column is missing? It was right before the condiments on all the other ones that we've gone over so far tonight. 
but it's going to start to be missing. That's right, Jennifer. The cooking oil is no longer there because the cooking oils are technically fats. And look, there's the word fat. You've already got fat there. You don't need to add additional fat. Now, this is where I use my zero calorie cooking spray if I need to cook something up. Okay. Or you can grill it, whatever, but I don't use any other oils here. Vicki says she would do eggs with Sarah Lee delightful toast. Yes, that sounds good. Sounds really good. Okay. We're going to scroll down again. We have category six superfood. Who remembers what I said qualified a food to be a superfood? And I'm going to read these while y'all type that in. We got pintos, black beans, red beans, soybeans, all your nut butters, nuts and seeds. So those are some, some foods that you could eat. Most of your darker colored beans are here. And you could have a cup up to one and a half cups of these if you're eating it alone. This is if you're eating this superfood by itself. But if you're going to combine that with a meal, you won't have room on your plate for it to fit at a cup to a cup and a half if you're also putting it with, let's just say, um, chicken breast and green beans. You know, if you wanted to put some black beans, chicken breast and green beans on the whole plate together, it's looking like chicken breast, black beans, green beans. That A cup and a half wouldn't fit there. That's if you're eating it alone. Okay, so a food qualifies to be a superfood if it has all four macronutrients in there. It would have water protein, carbs, and fat. Um, and so you can eat that by itself. It's actually its own little thing. It just handles itself, really. And then you can do condiments with it too. But let's scroll down and look at something else. Category six plus a category two. This is where you get your greens and beans if you like greens and beans. And there is also a combination that includes category one with this on your combination chart. We're just listing the six and the two out here, but you could even add a one to that like I just described. Um, but I also wanted to explain that this is where you're gonna find the ever popular peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Here's your nut butters, approved nut butters. Now it's not listed right here on this category, but we have lots and lots of approved category two, yes, category two breads. And how come these breads would make it in such a fabulous category? It's because they break down in your body more like a green bean than a bread because they have enough fiber in them to, and, and few enough calories to break down more like a green bean. So you just find the right bread and then you would use sugar-free jelly as your, your condiment. You could also use, there's a low sugar jelly and there's also the stevia sweetened good, good jam, which is what I have in my refrigerator. So there's peanut butter and jelly right there. While we're talking sandwiches, I'm gonna scroll back up real quick. I want you to see right here, this is where a grilled cheese is. The cheese isn't listed here, but if you use fat-free cheese, that's a category one protein plus fat. You use one of the category two approved breads. And over here, I would use the, I can't believe it's not butter spray as my little uh, oil to grill that up. And you could technically use four slices of the uh, fat-free bread cheese to make that let me just warn you that cheese will be all over the place if you use four slices so I don't like to do that what I do is I spray you know two pieces of bread with the I can't believe it's not butter spray I lay it on my griddle or in my pan I let it be heating I put one slice of fat-free cheese on each side and I put a little bit of uh, deli turkey meat on each side and I just let that grill and then I'll flip it over and warm up the um, warm up that deli meat too then I put it together and I have a grilled uh, turkey and cheese sandwich that's the way I do it because I'd have used up to four slices in there it was way too much cheese it was all over the place so I prefer it with a little bit a little bit of meat anyway okay so we've been through that well, we have another category, category three energy carbs. What should your mind be saying right now? Ding, 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 because you have got to know whatever your favorite energy carbs are, you've got to be eaten with a lean protein and a fibrous carb. So in a weight loss mode, it's best to stick with about a quarter cup of these items. Once you get to maintenance, if you want to try to go up to a half a cup, you can. Some people have told me that didn't work for them, but a quarter cup is best. 
all of your potatoes are here. No matter what kind of potato it is, it's here. Oatmeal, steel cut oats, Quaker fiber and protein oatmeal, long grain brown rice, most of your lighter colored beans, peas, tomato, onion, carrots, whole wheat pasta, and whole grain pasta. I'm going to talk about a few of these things right here, but I want to see what y'all would eat. What would y'all pick from category one, category two, and category three? So tomorrow night, we are going to be going over the food library. And in the food library, I'm going to go over some pasta with you tomorrow night that I think are better choices than just whole wheat and whole grain pasta. There's a lot better choices. So we're going to go over that tomorrow night. But carrots, once they are cooked, they're sugary and you've got to call them a category three. But if you just wanted to eat some of those raw baby carrots, a little palm full of raw baby carrots, you actually could do that as a freebie, as a freebie if you wanted to. Um, and if you wanted to include some raw ones like that on top of a salad, you could just keep it within your 50 calories for condiments. Um, tomato and onion. People are always surprised about tomato and onion being right here, but they do elevate your blood sugar and your pancreas would secrete insulin. And it's really dependent upon the amount that you're eating. If you were having a thin, I'm talking thin slice of onion or a thin slice of tomato on a, a, a chicken piece or 96% lean, lean ground beef, you could include that in your condiments if you wanted to, okay? But if you're having an amount that's up to a quarter cup, call it a category three, because when you call something a category three, that helps keep you safe. You know you're going to order, I mean order, you know you're going to make or serve yourself a category one and a two with it. Okay, pretty much threes aren't going to be eaten out at restaurants because if you eat meat at a restaurant, it's a category four, no matter what it's list it's on and when you're cooking this stuff at home. Um, and so, so you would do that and peas are here, except for the chickpea which is also a lighter colored bean. Isn't that the funniest thing? A chickpea and a garbanzo bean, it's the same thing. It's actually a superfood. This is why it's very important for you to look up the foods that you eat so that you can be aware what category they're in so that you can use them properly. Okay, thank you, Victoria. Thank you, thank you. So Victoria said that she would put chicken breast, asparagus, and a potato together. So this would look like chicken breast, Potato, about right here, it's gonna be about a quarter of a cup. You know, it's, it's small, it's a small amount, but it's, it's enough, it's plenty. And asparagus, it fit under here, okay? That is great. So what's gonna happen when you eat that is the potato is going to elevate your blood sugar. Your pancreas is gonna secrete insulin, but you're learning, I've got to eat in a way that controls insulin so that I don't store fat and have insulin, just a growth hormone running rampantly through my body. Because listen to this, y'all, after we stopped growing at whatever year of our age that we stopped growing, if we are running growth hormone through our body all the time, we're not growing taller. So that's why you've got to control that insulin. So we don't have a growth hormone running around through our body. And so the protein in that chicken breast and the fiber in the asparagus is going to neutralize the insulin release that came out from the potato. So awesome. Now I am desperately hoping that Victoria is not the only one that saw something that she would eat together out of these meals because what my goal is tonight is to show you how you would put meals together. You pick something from here. Now remember these are tiny lists and you pick something from here and something from here, you really could have so many different uh, combinations from just that, which would be great. So thank you for Victoria for participating. But what, what category is not here? Same as above. Okay, Connie said that she would do chicken breast, cauliflower, and sweet potato. Awesome, awesome, Connie. Thank you. So what column is missing right here? Okay, Tracy would do pork tenderloin, pork tenderloin, broccoli, and sweet potato. Awesome, awesome. Yes, Molly and Jack, the oils are missing. Yes, thank you, Victoria. Thank you. Vicki would eat turkey breast, cucumbers, and white potato. Good, 
I love it. I love it. Y'all are putting together some meals. And you know what? These may not have been meals that you've ever eaten before. And you may be trying some different things. And then maybe you go, I don't really like that combination. You just figure out a new one. Okay. But then maybe you like some new things that you um, didn't eat before. It's a nutritional adventure. Okay, so yes, the oils are missing here because when you eat the potato or the sweet potato or whatever it is that you choose to eat from this category, when it elevates your blood sugar and your pancreas secretes insulin, you do not need fat out in your body at the same time as, as this meal. So that's why the I would use zero calorie cooking spray with anything I'm using over here if I needed to cook, well, when I need to cook that up, okay. All right, so let's come down here. We have a new category, category five, fruit. All fruit is in fruit. So I'm not gonna read all of them, but I am gonna read you the top four, berries, apples, oranges, and grapefruit. So if you do want to eat some fruit, um, in weight loss mode, those would be really your best. Can you do any of them? Yes, you can. But if you're looking to have no, the knowledge of the little nuances of things, berries, apples, oranges, and grapefruit would be your best. And you've got to have your mindset on ding, ding, ding. This is a category five fruit. I must eat it with a lean protein and a fibrous carb. So a lot of times people will make a category one and two, maybe eat some berries as a little dessert after. You could do that. I mean, you could you could use fruit as a dessert. You just want to eat it with your meal or, you know, as a, um, so that the lean protein and the fibrous carb can do its job to regulate that blood sugar and dissipate that insulin, neutralize that insulin that came out, okay? And those ones that I just read to you, they're the lowest on the glycemic index. Um, so they're one of the best, but one of the things that I like to describe to you, and this is even great for kids, if you've got kids in the house, um, but if you take a, a meal to work and maybe you wanna take a small apple to eat, then you can probably make yourself, I would do turkey breast. I would wrap it up in an Olay Extreme Wellness High Fiber Tortilla. In my chicken breast, I mean, I mean, in my turkey breast wrap, I could even put spinach or romaine or any kind of lettuce I want because you can have more than one category two in a meal. So I might do that. Um, and then I would probably get a condiment. I would use the laughing cow cheese, you know, the ones that come in the little wedges and the round and the round thing. Spread that on my wrap, wrap that up. It would taste so good by lunchtime. And then I could even have a small apple or a small orange. And so that is a really great meal for kids to, to take to, to lunch to school. All right, because your kids can do this stuff too. And if you start teaching them these things now, they'll be so much better off than I was. And my children are already grown and I wish, oh man, I, we tried to eat healthy to begin with. So that was good. But I wish I'd, they, I wish I'd known this and could have taught them this. But anyway, all right. And the oils aren't going to be right here either because when fruit elevates your blood sugar, you don't want oil in your body at the same time. Now, when, oh, awesome, Molly. Molly, I, I'm a, former teacher and principal, and I really wish that we could get this into the school. So I'm so glad that you're saying that. And listen, they'll learn this stuff faster than adults sometimes because kids, they're like, what? Okay, let's do this. Um, okay, Jack, where does yogurt fit in? So if it is a Greek plain yogurt, it's usually a category one. So most approved yogurts, Jack, are going to be a category one. So you could, I would take maybe the Oikos triple zero yogurt and there is a product I don't have listed right here, but you could get some hemp flakes that are really good. They're kind of more like granola-y a little bit and put some berries or something into a yogurt and have a little parfait. That would be a great little meal, but most approved yogurts are category one lean proteins. I don't know if I've seen any in, in a protein plus fat, but you just want to make sure it's an approved one, Jack. All right, so let's come down here um, as a dessert. Now that the food that I just described would be a meal. It would be a meal. So you'd have um, Greek plain yogurt, hemp flakes, and berries. Now we call it a little parfait, but it's really just a breakfast or a meal. Now, sometimes what I'll do is I'll take 
the triple zero, the Oikos triple zero yogurt. I'll eat two of them, but I'll take a product that um, I'll show. If y'all were with me on Saturday night when I went over the little store, I showed a product called Carbolite, which is another little frozen yogurt mix. I'll put a tablespoon or two of, of that into my yogurt and it makes it like a mousse. Now I eat it as my meal. Now, Jack, you're going to find on Shibola, there's a lot of things that we have fixed. Guess what I had for dinner last night? Bread pudding. Now, bread pudding is something that, you know, before Shibboleth, we would have thought of that as a dessert and we would have eaten it as a dessert or a snack. But the way that you fix it on Shibboleth, it's a category one and two. Well, a one and two is a proper combination. So I had bread pudding for dessert last night and I, li I liked it. I liked it a lot. I really enjoyed doing that. Now, Jack, you could probably also get away with something like that for a snack, too. I would just want to make sure that it was um, under 200 calories for a snack, Jack. That rhymed. Okay, so now we're going to have a look at a couple of other things that aren't combinations, but that people are really interested in knowing about it. Okay, Victoria says, how did you make the bread pudding? All right, let me show this real quick. I'm going over to the Shibboleth website. And I am clicking on recipes. I mean, I'm clicking on resources. And here I am in the recipe library. I'm typing in bread pudding and searching. I see Jack is my first day trying. To, oh, I'm glad that you are. Great questions. Now, Jack, if you didn't watch last night's webinar, ooh, please, please, please go back and watch Sunday night webinar. It's the lifestyle overview. It's it's my it's the whole program in, in a nutshell. Okay, so bread pudding right here. So I took five slices of dry bread. It really, mine wasn't dry. I just pulled it out of the refrigerator and used it. But anyway, you tear it into little pieces and then you mix a cup of water and vanilla protein powder. I used Beverly Ump, but you want the protein powder to have five grams or of net carbs or less. Mix those together. And then you just kind of put the bread this mixed together, two tablespoons of ghee butter, half a cup of sugar substitute. I didn't use stevia, I used Swerve. Um, half a cup of Walden Farms calorie-free pancake syrup, three-fourths of a cup of egg whites, one teaspoon of cinnamon, and zero-calorie cooking spray. So basically, in a bowl, I mixed all of that. I sprayed a nine-by-nine casserole or Pyrex type dish and then actually after I mix all this I let it sit for five minutes to soak everything into the bread and then I just cooked it for an hour at 350 degrees and then once you make it you cut that into fours an entire fourth is the is the the meal. So right down here, it says that it could be a snack if you wanted it to be, or this is a category one and two meal. One and two is a proper combination. So I ate this for dinner. So the bread is the two, because you're going to pick a category two bread. This vanilla a protein powder, oftentimes it has, it's got enough protein in it to kind of be used as a, as a lean protein. And these egg whites are a lean protein. So it's a one and a two. This sugar substitute, the ghee butter, Walden Farms, all of that goes in together in the 50 calories of condiments. So it works. So bread pudding. So once you look up bread pudding, and now I teach this on Wednesday night. Y'all come back for recipes and the grocery list on Wednesday night, but you can heart it. You always heart your favorites. And you won't be seeing the full food library, recipe library, and restaurant guide unless you have taken your fast track quiz. So make sure you take your fast track quiz to open all that up for you, okay? And then if I decided I wanted to add this to my grocery list, I can add that to a grocery list. Connie says, what does that green zero mean? This means that this recipe is a zero on the weight loss meter. I do specifically teach this tomorrow night, but I'll go ahead and explain it. The weight loss meter is a, I call it a secondary way for us to categorize foods. We're going to categorize foods based on whether or not they're a lean protein, a fibrous carb, and so forth. We would also 
and categorize them whether or not they're a meal replacement, a snack, a freebie, an extra. But once you are in those different categories, some foods are better for weight loss than others. Um, I'll show you that, Victoria. Some foods are better for weight loss than others. So we have the weight loss meter. It goes from a negative three to a positive three. Negative numbers are better for weight loss. Positive really is best for maintenance or just ever so often in weight loss. Zero, which is right in the center, not going to help you, not going to hurt you. Okay, so you just have to learn those little nuances and everything. Okay, Victoria, um, first of all, you want to make sure that you are in the fast track laps. And so you can get there by clicking on dashboard. And then if you're brand new, fast track should be popping up to you. But if not, if you've been around a while and are refreshing, your instructor page pops up to you. Just click on fast track. What you all want to be doing is methodically working your way through this. Got to trust the system because I've put this together in a very organized way for you to work your way through. Get printing out the things you need, getting in the groups you need if you're a Facebook user. Then in lap two, getting your account set up. And then lap three through seven is me showing you how to use the website so I can shorten your learning curve on your using the website. But Victoria, you can find the, the quiz or the test in two places. Right here where it says watch the 14 fast track videos. When you scroll all the way down to the bottom, there's the quiz right there. Or just in case people miss it there, which does happen sometimes, I have it in lap two because I want to make sure that before we get into the food library on lap three, that you've taken your quiz. So if you've taken your quiz prior to getting here, when you get here, you can just check the box. But if you need to take the quiz there, go ahead and take it right there and it will take you directly to the quiz. Once you have passed the quiz, this badge, I love the badges y'all, badges are fun. Um, this badge right here, the full access badge will pop up. And that means that you will have now opened your full food library, recipe library and restaurant guide. Did that help Victoria? I hope so. Okay, I'll be looking for your response. Okay, now category two breads. Obviously when it comes to breads, less is best. Okay, good, less is best. but. What I love about Shibboleth is we don't exclude any nutrients or macronutrients. We don't, we don't exclude typical things. We look for the ones that will work for our purposes, and then we just teach you how to use them. So category two breads, less is best. You do not want more than 100 calories of bread per meal. So that's why most of our breads are going to be a little bit lower. And if they're a little bit higher, you may only use one slice of bread. You know, you got to think about things like that. But the La Tortilla Factory 50 calorie tortilla will work. Olay Extreme Wellness High Fiber Tortilla, Healthy Life Bread, Bran Chris Bread, which is not really a bread. It's more like a, a cracker, but it's good. Healthy Life Hot Dog Buns um, and Thomas Light English Muffins, the 100 calorie English muffins. Look, we're talking using English muffins and hot dog buns. That's because these things have enough fiber in them to break down in your body more like a green bean and be used purposefully. But you just wouldn't want to use more than 100 calories uh, worth of bread or bread type items like tortilla. It's a breadish type item. I mean, there's lavash bread and pita bread and other things too that is approved. Okay, approved sweeteners, any zero calorie sweetener works fine. Approved beverages, you never wanna uh, let anything take the place of your water. So you always wanna get your water in at least a minimum of 64 ounces every single day, but shooting for a gallon, okay? You can have zero calorie beverages of any type, but they don't take the place of your water. So what I do is if I go to a restaurant or something like that, I'll treat myself with one of, those things. But the rest of the time I'm trying to get water in. I could do unsweet or approved tea. Now today I, I was at a restaurant and I did what I call a Mrs. Palmer. Y'all know what an Ar Arnold Palmer is, you know, half, uh, half tea or sweet tea, half lemonade. 
Let's see. Oh my goodness, Rob, I'm so glad you got that gallon in. Yes, that's awesome. That's awesome. You're going to feel so good normalizing your hydration levels. It's going to make a huge difference. So great job. Um, can tea be a part of water? It cannot. It cannot. So water, we're talking water, clean, clear water only, unless you wanted to add maybe a little bit of lemon or lime, but none of those other squeezy things or packets counts towards your water, clean, clear water. Now you can use unapproved, I mean, you can use approved, I mean, unsweet tea or approved tea, but it would be in addition to getting your water in, Jack. Victoria, what about using cream or something in coffee? Um, you can use up to 15 calories of an approved sweetener. If I click right here, oh, why did it take me there? Bummer. It didn't take me where I wanted to go. All right, so let's go back over to the, um, I'm, going to the I'm going to the food library because I wanna show you something. This is something I also go over tomorrow. Um, no, Tracy, you wouldn't wanna use Propel in water to count. You can use it in addition to your clean, clear water, but we don't add packets or squeezy things to our water unless it's just lemon or lime juice, you, but no Propel and it could be in addition to your water. So what I might do, Tracy, is at least get in my 64 ounces of water and then maybe do a, a Propel or something like that. Okay, let's scroll down here. Um, over here on the right hand side, oh, I think I skipped it, creamers. So in the food library, which we go over tomorrow night, we're going to show you this link, but I'll go ahead and give you a quick link to it. You could do up to 15 calories of an approved sweetener in coffee. And I will copy this and put it in the chat so that you can Click on that and then it'll open it up in a new window and then you can look at it later. So yes, you can use up to 15 calories. Now y'all see all these little filters and the weight loss meter and these categories. This is our food library. It's like having an encyclopedia of all things uh, proved. And we're gonna go over this tomorrow night. That is tomorrow night's video. Okay, cheese. This is talking about using cheese as condiments. You can use these things up to 50 calories. All fat-free cheese is also considered a category one lean protein. But if you were to purchase something like this Cabot Extra Light Cheese, this would be a um, category four protein plus fat because it's got more fat in it than um, the fat-free cheeses. Um, if you can't find a fat-free cheese somewhere out in stores, which I buy the Borden fat-free for singles. I do buy this Cabot Extra Light Cheese. I really like it a lot. But Travis says that he really likes this Lifetime fat-free cheese, and he just goes onto their website, orders it, and they ship it to his house. I've not done that. Okay, and this is very, very important. This lean protein milk, it is extremely important to understand why we use this. I call whole milk fat storage in a jug because whole milk is just sugar and fat. That is not a good combo. So whole milk is fat storage in a jug. But it's lean protein milks. There's no fat in it. It's been fortified with protein. All right. So it's good. If you have a lactose intolerance issue, it doesn't have any lactose in it either. And even if you're not lactose intolerant, it doesn't have any lactose. Okay. If this is a category one lean protein, and if you're using it as a component of a meal, you could have up to eight ounces. But let's just say you're just drinking a big old glass of milk as you leave for work for the day, you could have up to 16 ounces of that, okay? If you have a Kroger near you, this Kroger Carb Master Milk, they got regular flavor milk and chocolate and vanilla. I love chocolate and vanilla. It is so good. I hadn't drank milk in years before Shibboleth. It just wasn't my thing and dairy wasn't my thing, but I will buy this every so often and drink it. Mm, it's good. Um, it, but if you don't have a Kroger near you, there's fat-free fair life pretty much all over the country. This milk comes in very handy if you're a cereal eater, and we're going to spend more time on cereals tomorrow night, but it's really important to understand why you drink this milk with cereal rather than the other. Think about it. Even some of the best cereal is starchy. You do not want to have fat 
in with a starchier cereal and you need protein to offset it. So that's why that. Victoria almond milk is approved. I would prefer that you use the unsweetened almond milk, but it is approved, but it's a category four and you would have to have it with what we call a phase one cereal. And we're going to talk about those cereals tomorrow. And all phase one means to you is that it's a higher quality product. We've got phase two cereals, but when we start talking about Captain Crunch and Reese Puffs, you've got to know we didn't go higher quality. We just are saying it'll work if you have it with that lean protein milk. And we'll talk about what we're calling those things. Phase two just means more variety, kind of like using the inner aisles of the grocery store, what's approved in those inner aisles of the grocery store. And there's some cereals right there. Some of the best to get started with might be Kashi Go Lean Original K's Natural Cereal, which we sell in our store. And I really like the um, vanilla almond. And then there's high low nutritious living that can be found out in regular grocery stores. I'm not going to go over these restaurants tonight because we do that on Friday night. But right here, breadings and flowers, pretty important to understand these. If you like things breaded or if you like um, muffins and pancakes and um, waffles and biscuits and things like that. So all of these things can be used in that way. And pretty much these are category two fibrous carbs, except for this soy product right here. Um, it's, I can't remember what it is, but anyway, we'll talk more about this tomorrow. We're gonna look up carb quick. This stuff is your swap for flour. It's your swap if you liked Bisquick or other baking mixes. Carb Quick is going to be your friend. And in our little store online, if you were to go in there and look up recipe starter kit, you would get Carb Quick, MCT oil, and ghee butter. I think those are pretty important to go ahead and get and have in your house because if you're ever looking at the recipe library and you say, oh, I really want to make that. Dang it. If I had the, the carb quick, I could go ahead and make that. That's the only thing I'm missing. Or, oops, if I had some ghee butter, I could make that because like that bread pudding called for ghee butter. Um, and I actually, on the way home from church yesterday, I run by the store and buy some ghee butter to make that because I had run out. Actually, I had one tablespoon left in my other one and I needed two. So, um, so those are the things, in my opinion, that it's best for you just to have at the house, those staples. So tomorrow night, we're going to go over the food library and the timing chart and how to use those things to, to your benefit. If y'all go ahead and take a sneak peek at lap three, there's a worksheet in there too, where you could start listing out your favorites. And that might be something that if you have a printer, you can print. But if you don't have a printer, you can use that as a template and create it on whatever paper you've got. Okay. Um, well, I hope that y'all have enjoyed tonight and that it's been informative. This is the absolute best lifestyle you are ever going to be acquainted with. It is not hard. And I've been doing this thing. You're welcome, Molly. You're welcome. I've been doing this thing now for two and a half years. And it's just like clockwork now. A little piece of fuzz flew off my sweater. It's like clockwork. I just do it. And this is really where you want to be. Your best asset in this is to be able to outlast everybody else. So let's just stick to it and outlast everybody else, okay? My prayer for you is that the Lord keeps you safe day and night and gives you courage, strength, and might. Night, everybody. Let's see. What do you do when you hit a wall and stop losing? Well, we have some things that we use called wow challenges. Wow challenges, night, Connie, are... Um, little one day challenges that are designed to help you lose up to a pound in a day, depending on where you are in your weight loss journey. But one of the things that most people like to do, Vicki, and this is going to sound really funny is, well, one, you just keep doing what you're doing. You just keep doing what you're doing. Sometimes your body has to catch up. Um, thank you, Tracy. I look forward to seeing you. Good night, Sabrina. Awesome. But a lot of times, your body is still losing inches. You're welcome, Sandra. It's still losing inches, but nothing is showing up on the scale. We always encourage everybody to take their measurements, Vicki, because sometimes you're going to go, but like, dang, okay, I see my measurements. I'm just going to keep doing what I am doing. But otherwise, a wow challenge is a thing 
you also could just lock it in and make it a little bit tighter. But honestly, the best thing to do, Vicki, is just to say, this is how I should be eating anyway. Let me just keep right on going. And when you keep right on going, it will all, it'll all work itself out. I lost an additional 15 pounds living in maintenance. So just keep right at it, Vicki. You got it. You got it. All right. If y'all can join me in the morning for the Shibby Show on the public Facebook page. And it's about 730, 740-ish. You're welcome, Vicki. You're welcome. Not everybody.